What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The King's Sport with me, Vince Miracle, here for fansonder.com, GoldenGateSports.com, and of course, SackKingsNation.com. So be sure to go to all three of those King, go all three of those websites for all your daily Kings news. Now, today's episode is going to be a draft review. Not just focusing on the Kings, but the NBA in general, the NBA draft in general. But of course, since this is the Kings Court, and since this is where people go to get all their daily Kings news, whether it be you know trades or so on and so forth, we're here to give it to you in that demand. So let's start off with the Sacramento Kings pick. And with the 8th overall pick, the Sacramento Kings surprised me. I did not expect this pick. They picked shooting guard Nick Stauskas out of Michigan. Now, Nick Stauskas, he's an interesting prospect. Uh, the one thing that I keep getting questions about was, you know, how is this going to fit with Ben McMore? That's a question I asked myself. You know, as soon as I heard that pick and I was at the fire, Firestone House, Firestone House, Palace Place, the where the draft party was, and, um, yeah, it was, it was, you know, mixed emotions in there after that name was name was called but for me the biggest question that came into my head was what happens to Ben McLemore you know the Kings just drafted a shooting guard just last year at the same exact time and McLemore you know let's be honest guys he did not have the greatest season you know his his rookie season was not the greatest but at the same time those last two months were great I mean he I think he was averaging right around 13 to 15 points a game, you know, right around five rebounds a game. You know, he was putting in work, and he, he was showing that although his handle still needs a lot of work, he did develop a little bit better, you know. Although he still needs to build up strength, he couldn't do it in the beginning of the season, and when James Ham was on, he, he even said it himself, Ben McLemore could not finish around the basket. He could not make layups at times, but towards the last two months of the season, he was finishing a little bit better, more and more. He was getting a whole lot better. And, you know, that was nice to see. But now, the Kings go on and draft Nick Stauskas. And Stauskas, you know, he is a talent. And the NBA comparison I gave him was Klay Thompson. And I think that fits. You know, he's one of those players that can put the ball on the floor. I think that if he builds enough muscle because of what he can do, with the ball in his hands, whether that be in pick and roll situations, whether that be, you know, shooting the ball off catch and shoot situations, and just like McLemore, he is good off the ball. Maybe not as good as McLemore, but he can, you know, move around. He like he can do catch and shoot situations, you know, because of his great shooting ability. Like McLemore, the biggest thing that I have to say for whether you would want Stauskas. Or McLemore, why they would pick him is because how bad McLemore did that rookie season. And I'm not saying he's not McLemore's not going to turn out to be something great. You know, he might be turning out to be something great. We just don't get to know that. Like no one knows. I mean, he still has to develop. He still has to, you know, put in the work, put in the time. We don't know 100% that Ben McLemore is not a bust. We don't know that. We don't know if he's an all star. And that's why you draft Nick Stauskas. I mean, yes, the Kings needed a power forward. Yes, the Kings needed to add defense. Did they do that with this Nick Stauskas drafting him? No, but you know what they did add? Another need that they that they had with this team last season. And that's shooting. Three-point shooting, to be specific. Stauskas averaged 44% from beyond the perimeter. You know, he averaged 17 points per game. I think it was like 17.6, 17.5 points per game, which led the team. You know, a lot of people worried when Trey Burke left just la the prior season during his freshman year that Stauskas wasn't going to be able to do as much because they're not going to have Trey Burke being able to facilitate the offense. And, you know, he proved that he can do a lot more than what people think. He, he redshirted, his, redshirted his freshman season. You know, he worked on his handling. He worked on his weight. You know, he became more more developed, more all-around. And that's what Ben McLemore isn't. I mean, Ben McLemore does not have a handle. He needs someone to pass him the ball. He's one of those players that is a slasher. He's one of those players that needs to come off his screen and off a catch in situ situations. Is that a bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing, but maybe, maybe the Kings want something more than just a player that can run around. And that's what Stauskas brings. Uh, I like the comparison of Manu Ginobili that they showed on ESPN. But it really wasn't, 
You know, I, I don't see that yet for him. And there's been a lot of talk of what position, could he play the one and things like that. I think personally that it can happen right now. If you're asking me right now, if the leaks, if you know, the NBA started, from what I've seen, the NBA started tomorrow. And from what I've seen from a lot of college film and all the stuff like that, I would say no, he's not a point guard yet. He has potential to be it. He still needs to develop, develop that passing. He only averaged 3.3 assists a game. And although that's nice from the shooting guard position, and a lot of it was in pick and roll situations, it's, it's it still needs more. And that's fine. And just like all rookies that come out, he still needs to develop his weight as well. You know, I, I love his swagger, though. You know, he has that... You know, the win-now attitude that nothing, you know, he doesn't get feared by anything. And it's, it's just something I think that it's nice to have on this Kings team. I think another thing that I was asked while I was at the draft party, while I was actually leaving, someone asked me how I thought about the pick and, you know, is he the next Marcus Thornton? And I had to think about that for a second. I said, why did you bring up Marcus Thornton? Well, he said because Marcus Thornton had a little bit of a handle but he just stood in one spot and could shoot the basketball. I could see Stauskas doing that. For me, I, I had to disagree. I think that's what the problem was with Thornton was he didn't really move around off the ball. He was a stand and watch guy. Stauskas, if you watch, moves baseline to baseline, moves around the perimeter, moves without the ball in his hands. The only thing with Stauskas, unlike McLemore, is he's not as quick. He's not as fluid. I will give that to Ben McLemore. Ben McLemore is one of the most fluid players when it comes to moving without the basketball in his hands. And that's something, you know, maybe that can be taught. And Nick Stauskas, especially on defense, he's going to be a weak defender because of his lateral quickness, which is what I had to tie in to the moving without the basketball in his hands. But, yeah, he, he needs to work on his speed. That's one thing he desperately needs to work on, especially if he's going to be working on defense as well as his weight. But, I mean, what... What rookie coming out of college really doesn't need to work out his way, especially the ones who are at the guard spot. I mean, this is one of the times I think Marcus Smart was the, that one player where you're like, uh, I think he was right about that right size. I mean, you, you look at Jabari Parker, you're like, okay, he's right about that right size, but he could be you know, a little out of shape. You look at Andrew Wiggins, he's going to need to put on weight. Stauskas is in that same group. He's going to need to put on weight if he's going to want to succeed at that shooting guard level. He's going to need to build up his speed to play defense against other shooting guards in this league. But I think that one-two attitude, that swagger that he has, I just think it's a right fit. And I think that people are overlooking the fact that, you know what, yes, the Kings need a power forward. There's still power forwards out in the free agency market. You still have Carl Landry. You still have Reggie Evans. Yes, there are older pieces, but they're still there. You still have Jason Thompson. Although I do think he will be moved. Last point I'm going to bring about Nick Stauskas before I move on. Nick Stauskas, for me, this is just my personal opinion. I want to know if you guys agree with me or not. But I think Nick Stauskas could be something special. A lot faster than Ben McLemore. I think Ben McLemore is going to be something special as well. I don't think he's going to be, you know complete all-star for like a long time if he ever can reach that true potential that Macklemore has. I think Macklemore has a lot of potential. I think he actually has a higher ceiling than Nick Stauskas. But I think if you're looking at an impact player that'll come in and make an impact right away, unlike Ben Macklemore, I think Stauskas can do that. I think he can is one of those players that can walk in and he'll know his role and because of what he can do with the ball in his hands and with the ball out of his hands, I think that just makes him more of a threat. I think just that more all-around game that McLemore has not developed yet really will make help Stauskas succeed later on when his career starts with the Sacramento Kings. And we're going to be able to see it, I think, I believe in, I think, two weeks now. Excuse me. I believe in, like, two weeks the Summer League is going to start, and you know he's going to be on there. I know McLemore is going to be there as well. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be nice to see. And McLemore did not have a great summer league during his rookie season either. You know, he struggled. He had a couple of nice games, but then he struggled again. So maybe we'll, we're going to see that developing. Yes, guys, I did see the report 
that Ben McLemore w is working out with Carmelo Anthony at one call at one of the colleges. I'm not taking big. I'm not you know, not reading too much into it. I mean, a lot of players go to certain areas, and maybe they just happen to go at the same time. I really don't think they plan to go together. But I, mean, I could be wrong. But I'm not reading too much into it. And yes, because I'm going to get asked this later, and why I didn't bring it up. But yes, I did see the report. And for those who didn't hear, is that. Bat and McLemore and Carmelo Anthony are working out together I, at a college. I can't remember which college it was. For some reason, I'm thinking it's UCLA, but I know it's not. But, yeah, they're working out together. And even in that same report, it said that most players go there to work out anyway. So I just think maybe they ended up there at the same time. And it's going to be a good workout for McLemore. You know, maybe maybe Mac, uh, Melo will teach him a couple things. Because I think Melo is one of the best offensive small forwards in the league. Uh, and he's a top three small forward for sure. All right, guys, I'm going to keep going on in this draft just a little bit longer here because this is a full draft review. I think one of the biggest steals of this draft, before I touch on that, actually, I want to get on this whole trade thing because I want to stay on the Kings topic before I move on to the next teams. So I will get into the steals. But I want to know how disappointed all of you guys were that the Kings did not make a move. I mean, you heard all of these rumors, and I'm not surprised that they didn't. I mean, if you look at, you know, past drafts, all the hype that were all about big trades and things like that, stuff usually never really happens on draft day. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. I mean, it can happen during free agency. But, I mean, if you look at past drafts, all the hype that goes into it, most times nothing really happens. It's all just smoke. Uh, just smoke to, uh, to blind out everything and just make it more hyped up and more fun to watch, which of course it is. I mean, you wondered what the Kings were going to do the entire draft to see maybe, hey, is Macklemore being moved? Hey, is Isaiah Thomas going to be, you know, somewhat in a deal that would be, you know, shook upon until, you know, free agency actually began? But, yeah. I'll, I, this isn't really me talking about it. I'm just asking you guys to leave your comments in the comment section below. What did you guys think about the Kings not making any moves at all? And, you know, they, they said they wanted veteran help right when the draft lottery ended. They said that they put this number eight pick on the trading block and they wanted to, you know, get veteran help on this young roster. And they didn't do anything. They picked Nick Stauskas, which is a good pick, in my opinion. He does feel a need. Although people don't think so, he does feel that need. And, you know, let me know what you guys think. Were you guys disappointed that they didn't make a move? Do you think there's a move, you know, still coming in the future? What move do you think that is? And, you know, things like that. I mean, were you happy that they didn't make a move? Are you happy with this pick? And now with that out of the way, let me move on to the steals of the draft. I think the biggest steal of the draft, and this isn't necessarily a steal, but the right move in this draft was from Chicago. I think Chicago getting Doug McDermott makes them – a bigger threat than most people think. What do they need? They needed offense, and now they're figuring that out. They know they have their core of defense. You, they know they're going to be getting Derrick Rose back, whether it's 100% or not. Derrick Rose is Derrick Rose, and he's, he's a threat on the floor no matter whether he's 75% or 100%. He's going to be in that range, especially since he basically took another season off. But now they just need more offense. You have Dunleavy. You, I believe they still have Augustine. You're going to get Doug McDermott. Jimmy Butler's turning into something special. Tony Snell turned into something special. You don't know who else they're going to be getting a free agency. Taj Gibson is offense. Carlos Boozer is only offense. So now the Bulls, I mean, with Doug McDermott, I think the Bulls even become more of a threat than what they are originally already were. And so I think that was one of the biggest, you know, trade deals or steals of the draft. That's why I call it the steal. The next big steal of the draft, I think, you know, I'm going to say it again. The San Antonio Spurs. Kyle Anderson, that's like a Boris Diaw player, a Boris Diaw-esque type of player. And they got him with the last pick in the 2014 NBA draft. The San Antonio Spurs, the defending champions, got a player who already, you know, embodies a player that helped, you know, was a big key part and helping them win an NBA championship just this season, just this past season, before this draft. That's crazy to think about. And now Kyle Anderson gets to go into a situation where he gets to learn in in pop system. He gets to be around professionals. And already with that skill set, I think that just makes him a major steal. I think one of the biggest 
you know, question marks that are in this draft is one that I keep getting asked about, and that is, why do you think Noah Vonley dropped? Why didn't the Kicks, Kings pick Noah Vonley? Now, I've seen and heard from multiple people who have seen him work out, and I've, and I've watched a lot of interviews with, you know, mo, you know, I can't remember all of their names, but, you know, I, I've seen and talked to all of them, and I've got to, you know, listen to a lot of people's, uh, you know, opinion on him, and some are really high on Vonley. They said, yeah, he can be something, you know, crazy good. You know, Vonley has that potential to be, you know, someone who can spread the floor and be a stretch four and also bang down low. And then I've also heard that he's one of the biggest risks because, you know, you really, he, he wasn't supposed to be top 10 until he had that late surge. And even in the draft combine, he was bringing it up more and more. But do you guys really want a player that is getting that late, late little ruffle? I mean, it, to me, because of the mixed reviews I got from, you know, certain areas around from all the multiple people that I talk to and the websites that I look upon, I, I got the feeling of whether he's going to be a, a boom. Like he's going to be just something to go. He's going to be great as soon as he steps in the NBA or at least within that three-year span. He's going to develop into something special or he's going to be a straight bust. And that's the feeling I got, is especially from the reviews I've read on him, his pros and his cons, especially on NBA Draft.net and watching. I know all of you guys watch the Draft Express videos on YouTube. I watch them as well. And you know what? Yes, he's a nice player. But the more you watch, and don't just watch Draft Express, watch games. Watch actual games. Watch actual college tape. And you see, a lot of it was going off of PER numbers, you know, per 40 minutes, per this, per that. You know, and for me, I want to see what he's doing there. And he wasn't doing it in his time. Yes, in the 25 minutes he played, he got nearly, I believe, 10 rebounds a game. Nice. He got a few blocks a game. Nice. But now he's going to the next level. I mean, college and NBA are two different things. He did not get this into the top 10 until he got that late surge. And I just think that boom or bust riskiness is just something you pass on. Now then again, people ask me about Doug McDermott. You know, Doug McDermott would have been a nice fit. But do you really want another tweener on this team? I think Stauskas is a prototypical shooting guard with the possibility of becoming a point guard. With Doug McDermott, you don't know if he's a small forward. You don't know if he's a power forward. He played power forward during college. He's not quick enough to play the small forward position, but he does move very well. He's very well conditioned. I just don't think you need another tweener on this Kings team. And a tweener, for those who don't know, is a player who is in between one or two positions, whether it be, you know, a small forward, power forward, or a type of, like, a, a center power forward type like that. Like, DeMarcus Cousins is a tweener. You don't know what he's going to be. He could be a center or he could be a power forward, which is most likely his ideal situation or position. All right, guys, we're coming to the end of the show now, and I want to start answering these fan questions before it gets too long. Now, if you have a question that you want to get on the show, you can email your question to sac or to sknarticles at gmail.com. You can also tweet into the show, Sack Kings Nation, on Twitter at, SKN, <coughs> at sknarticles, or you can tweet myself. My name is Vincent Miracle. Again, I'm your host, and you can find me on Twitter at VM Center, which you should be able to see right around here in this little box that I made. All right, guys, so the first question of the day comes from Connor, and Connor asks, do you think Nick Stauskas could be a point guard? I mean, I hit on this a little bit earlier, Connor. I think that he has the potential to be, and I just wrote an article on this on SatKingsNation.com, which all of you guys should go check out, where basically I'm explaining Nick, Staus Nick Stauskas fills a need on this Kings team. And I explain why. I compare him to Macklemore. I compare him to Thornton. You know, let's not forget, guys, the Kings all last season had trouble at that shooting guard spot. The entire time, whether it was Thornton, whether it was Outlaw, whether they did try to use Jimmer, mm -hmm. whether it was Macklemore, they the production that you got from that shooting guard small that shooting guard position was so small, maybe you need to change it up a little bit. Maybe get a player who can possibly turn it into a point guard like Stauskas and still get that shooting ability and that, that swagger, that attitude. And, you know, maybe he turns into the, to, I think, Bill Simmons' comparison of Manu Ginobili. Maybe he turns into the next Clay Thompson. Would you guys be disappointed if the Kings got a, you know, young Clay Thompson? 
I mean, I know a lot of fans are interested in that. They want to trade for Clay Thompson. They would definitely do it. Maybe you have him right here. You don't know. You just don't know. But, yes, I do think he can be a point guard. Not yet, though. He still needs to develop that handle. He still needs to de develop on that passing. But if he can develop more and more, I think within, within two years, within his first two years, I think he has the potential to, at times, run that point guard spot. But we will see. And, Connor, thank you for your question. The next question comes from Jasmine Alexander. <clears throat> and Jasmine Alexander says, if the Kings, sorry, my phone kind of just tweaked out for a second. One second, guys. And he says, I kind of got the idea of it, but I want to make sure I read it correctly. But anyways, my phone's not working. So he says, basically, if the Kings lose in Summer League, do you look at a different coach? Are you looking for coaching change? No. <laughs> I mean, Summer League is not going to be coached by Coach Michael Malone. And Summer League doesn't define anything about the Kings season coming up in the 2014-2015 season. I, I like Coach Michael Malone. I think he's still learning. I mean, this was his first season as a head coach as well. I mean, he was a rookie just last season. So I think he has the potential to be something special, you know, as a coach. I think he has everything mapped out. And no, I do not think if the Kings struggled during the NBA Summer League that you need to start looking at a coaching change because I don't think, you know, he's going to – be coaching it. I know he's not going to be coaching it. He's going to have one of his assistants coaching it. All right, and our last question of the day comes from Wave from t on Twitter. He says, do you think we will acquire a Rondo or Josh Smith? You know, I answered this question, I think, uh, two episodes ago, and or I think it was in the Rumors episode, so yeah, around two episodes ago. And uh, maybe. It, it, the Kings have a couple pieces. I think that the more likely scenario of what's going to happen is the Kings acquire Josh Smith, which, in my mind, is a better deal than the Rondo. Because Rondo, yes, it would nice. It would be nice to have Rondo. Whether people like him or don't like Rondo, Rondo is a champion. Rondo is a great facilitator. And on a team with DeMarcus Cousins and Rudy Gay, someone with people who dominate the ball offensively, having a guy that distributes it around would not be a bad idea. I, I just don't I just don't think it'd be a bad idea to have him, but his contract expires after next season, and that's why you saw Boston take Marcus Smart at six, because they know they're going to most likely need another point guard. The consensus is is that Rondo will most likely opt out of his contract next season, and he'll be a free agent. So that's the risk you're going to be taking again, and you're already taking that risk with Rudy Gay. Do you really want to take it with Rondo? I think a Josh Smith deal is more likely just the fact that you would be paying him $14 million for the next three years. So will a trade happen? Maybe a McLemore deal if he decides to get moved. I think that no matter what, if you're giving up Isaiah, uh, if you're getting, getting Rondo, I think you're giving up Isaiah, Tom, uh, Isaiah Thomas. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is like cracking right now. <clears throat> and also, guys, before I, I, I sign off on the show, I wanted to give a free agent that a name that I wanted to let you guys think about because so many people have been asking me about this Josh Smith. You're not the first wave. You know, like I said, it was on the last episode and I was asked a couple times while I was at the Firestone for the draft party. But um, the name that I brought up that I think I really like and is a power forward and opted out of his contract so he is an unrestricted free agent so that means he is available for the Kings to actually go and sign. And that is Josh McRoberts. I think Josh McRoberts is very athletic he can pass the ball very well. He stretches the floor out. He can shoot that three ball. He can block shots. He's not the greatest defender, but he can play defense. But the fact that he can pass the ball very, very well, I believe he averaged near four to five assi assists a game from the power forward spot. He is a very, he is a very good three point shooter, and he is very, very athletic. And that's exactly what this Kings team is looking for. He's he would be way cheaper than Josh Smith. He fills in that role of a power forward that the Kings need. And he also stretches the floor, and he does not dominate the ball in the down low, uh, away in the post, away, so he's not blocking the lane for Cousins. And of course, he knocks down a jump shot, which also means he's stretching the floor, like I already said in the beginning. So let me know what you guys think about that pick. I want to thank you, Wade, for your question. Let me know what you think. Uh, leave your comments in the comment section below. Do you think the Kings are going to go and acquire Josh Smith or Rajon Rondo? 
you know, what what do you guys think of Nick Stauskas? Did you guys like that pick? Or now that you have had time to look, look review this draft and look over it, that, you know what, yay. Let's see what this guy's got. I think I like this pick now. Are you guys still disappointed and think that the Kings just have something up their sleeve to where they're going to make a deal with it, whether Stauskas or uh, Macklemore will be in it? And then I also want to know, what do you guys think is going to happen with Isaiah Thomas with free agency, free agency about to begin? Leave all of your comments below. Again, hit that like button. It lets us here at SatKingsNation.com, Fansided.com, and GoldenGateSports.com that you guys enjoyed this episode and enjoyed this show. And again, also become a subscriber. That really does help me out, help Sat Kings Nation out, and things like that. It really is appreciated. So be sure to go do all of that. And until next time, Kings fans, and that will be Monday. And we might be having our new co-host on Monday. But I don't want to get all your guys' hopes up. But we will be having a co-host very, very soon. And again, Monday will be our next show. And until next time, Kings fans.